Lamentations chapter 2, picking up Jeremiah writing. After Jerusalem is fallen. And I read someone somewhere something. That, and the person exposing Lamentations likened the book of Lamentations, Lamentations to me, funeral. And that's a perfect description of this Lamentations of Judah. There has been a massive military campaign and attack and destruction by God using Babylon. You think about Hurricane Ida, used, made by God, and everywhere from Louisiana all the way up to New England. And there have been deaths, and there have been destruction, there have been flooding, there have just been all kinds of, of events, and, and just, they had a thing in New York where, you know, unofficial underground apartments where people have died, drowning in their homes from the flooding. That's what's going on here. As I said, Jeremiah should be a wake-up call, and it's not to America in the world. Well, Lamentations is after the fact. That you can't change it now. And you may call in the bulldozers and the construction and the army corps and everything after, but you can't change it. How has the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? Now that cloud in anger, if you run cloud throughout the Bible, you've got a tribulation and a second advent passage or passages. We're not going to run that tonight. But he says that he comes with clouds. So this destruction is going to happen again. It happened in World War One. It happened in World War Two, and it's going to happen after the tribulation, during the tribulation period, when Jesus comes. Jerusalem is just going to be destroyed and cast down from heaven upon, onto the earth the beauty of Israel, and it was beautiful. And remember, not his footstool. That's the earth. The earth is my footstool, God says, in the day of his anger. One day all the earth and all the heavens are going to burn up. The Lord has swallowed up all the inhabitants of Jacob. Death. Captivity. Notice he's not saying the Babylonian army. Jeremiah knows who, where this came from. He prophesied it. I don't know where Jeremiah is, but he's sitting there saying, and it writing says, God told me to tell you. And as far as me personally, people of the great white throne judgment, is God told me to tell you to avoid where you are right now. And there will be some people at, 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 at the judgment seat of Christ. Man, I am so thankful you did what you did. Man, I didn't like you in a bit, but you know, later on I listened and some I got right. You know, we find at least three people, three people in Jeremiah that actually got right with the Lord and the Lord named their name. Now we read later on that some people did give themselves over to the Babylonian army. But... Was that just because that's the only thing they had to do? And has not pitied. God laid. Now listen, as we read Lamentations, look at what God has done to the Jew, to God's people. What is he what do you think he's going to do to the heathen who are not his? Now, I'm not just saying America, I'm saying all the nations. Look what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. You can't even recognize that place. When you go, you, you dig up uh, brimstone balls. They find brimstone balls. When you go over to Babylon today in Iran, it's destroyed. 
You say, well, why wasn't Germany completely destroyed? Because there were a few Christians. England wasn't completely destroyed because there were a few Christians. America's not destroyed because there are a few Christians. What are you going to do when God takes all the Christians out? He's going to put the Antichrist. There will be no mercy and grace under the Antichrist. And on top of the Antichrist, God will be given in hail and, and brimstones and earthquakes and these, these horses with scorpion tails. He has thrown down, he, God, has thrown down the, in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought them down to the ground, the armories, the protection, the, the fortification. He has polluted the kingdom and the princes there. Your military ain't going to be against God. This is God's people, God's people's military, God's people's strongholds. God, gone. Samson was God's person. Samson was used by God. God gave Samson the Holy Spirit. Go on. The Lord has swallowed the inhabitants of Jacob and has not pitied. He has cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. And horn in the Bible represents strength and power as the horn of, a, of an animal. The horns of a deer is they will fight for mates. They will fight the control of the other deer. He has drawn back his right hand. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ then and now is seated at the right. Jesus Christ has always been. He's at the right hand at the Father. So at the right hand of the Father in heaven is Jesus Christ. He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. And the Bible would say that Jesus came unto his own, his own received of none. When Jesus Christ comes back at the second advent, he's coming back to save the Jews and the enemies of the Jews. Whoa. He is burned against Jacob like a flaming fire. And when you read about the second advent, Jesus, his eyes are fire. And everything in front of him gets burnt up. And the Bible says behind him is like Eden. The Garden of Eden. So you see the second advent passage. Which devours round about. That's second advent. But that is what God did to the Jews. And God will do that to the enemies of the Jews. He has bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary. There was a time that Jesus Christ was the adversary of the people of God because of their sins. And because of our sins today and because of the sins of the nations later, Jesus Christ is our adversary. If you have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, he does not love you. And you get these pastors and all that, oh God, Jesus is love and all that. None of you reject him. If there was a human father who had a son that pushed somebody out of the way and got ran over by a bus and the person that was survived, that was saved gets up from there and mocks and cusses and makes fun of the person that saved his life that father is not going to love him that, it's going to be anger and that's what men do against Jesus Jesus is angry, though they are God's people, he's angry with the Jews now because they're not listening. They're not adhering. Now some are. And slew all that were pleasant in the eyes in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire again. That's second advent. Not against the Jews, against the enemies of the Jews. For what God has done to his people, he must do to the heathen. 
Or he's going to call every Judah, person of Judah, man and woman. He would have to call up and say, okay, line up in front of me. Jeremiah, come in. Is that everybody that was there during the time you wrote? Okay. I like to apologize to all you. I killed you wrong. I attacked you wrong. I, I was completely wrong. That ain't going to happen. And these nations that are pride, like Judah was in Jeremiah. These nations like pride, like Babylon. These nations in pride, like Esau. These nations of pride, like England. Oh, uh, the sun never sets on the British Empire. Oh, the Japanese, the rising sun emperor. In America, we're... Well, Judah had the same aspect, and look what happened to Judah. Now Judah's going to be called back, Israel's going to be called back, and they'll be put back in unity because they are God's people. As you look at this, look at the second advent. Now, I, I would mark this in my Bible as the second advent, but it's also, the only thing that does not make this second advent is the people that's being done to is Israel. At the second advent, the people being rescued is Israel. And the enemy is the Gentiles. The Lord was an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. Israel's gone. Israel's gone to Assyria already. Judah did not take heed to what happened in Israel. Israel never had a king that done right. Judah did. He has swallowed up all her palaces. He has destroyed his strongholds. Again, that's military foundation. That's fortifications. You know, America says, we got the greatest army. We got the greatest navy. Yeah? My question, how come you couldn't beat, how come you couldn't beat Vietnam? How come you couldn't conquer Korea? How come you couldn't conquer Afghanistan? If you're, your army ain't that good. An increase in the daughter of Judah, mourning. That's not mourning. That's mourning and lamentation. Now Judah has suffered what Israel has suffered. Listen, when God beats, and I mean chasing somebody, when God chasing Israel, Judah should be, uh-oh. When you got children in your house and you take one child and, and you chastise him and you beat his butt, that's what the other children say, you. Dad means business. And they're, and they're Catholics, and everybody, well, you know, capital punishment doesn't. Yes, it does, because the person that murder ain't going to murder nobody again. You let these murderers go and all that, you find out in jail, you find out not, they do murder us. He has violently taken away this tabernacle. Look, look at that. Look what Jeremiah said. God was violent. It's interesting, I don't know if we're going to finish this chapter tonight. Genesis, I'll have to find it. Genesis, let me look it up. Genesis, Jeremiah said God was violent. Jeremiah 6, I mean, Genesis 6, 11. Watch this. You got to watch how you use your words. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Verse 13, God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come upon me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and before I will destroy them and all the earth. God said, hey, the whole world is filled with violence. That's it. I'm done. Lamentations. Jeremiah says he has violently taken away. Now, that's not God doing violence. That's a description of how God did it. How did God do it? He used two armies, the Babylonians and the Chaldeans, and they were just wicked, they're just vile, and they were complete to the job. What did God do? He did nothing. What did man do in Genesis? They raped, they killed, they murdered, they stole. God didn't do that. 
as if it were a garden. He's finally taken away his tabernacle as if it were a garden. Just rip it all up. He has destroyed his places of assembly. Want to laugh at that one? Places assembly. What did God say to the to the Jews before they got in front? There'll be one place. You're to go to sacrifice. There is one place you go three times a year. You cannot take your offering and sacrifice it wherever you feel like it. That place is assembly. You would put that almost as a word called church. Places is plural. The churches. He has destroyed the places of his assembly. Remember Jeremiah said when you studied the word of God, remember he said as many as gods, there are as many streets in Jerusalem, and as many as the altars are in the street corners. Those are what God destroyed. All those altars. What are all those altars? How many Baptist churches, hey, okay, the altar's open to everybody. Anybody want to come up to the altar? This is the altar. Welcome to, to God's house. And the Catholics have their big altar where they take Jesus out of the box. And I don't know about the rest of the, the religions. That's what it is. Those are the assemblies of gods. And God destroyed them. Those gardens. When you look into the truth and you look into Tammuz and the religion of Tammuz, they all had little gardens. You know, the Japanese and the Chinese are so famous in the Oriental. They have their little gardens. And when Daniel-san waxed on and waxed off, he had a business with Mr. Miyagi. He said, little bonsai tree. And he had the back of his cave. He had the little bonsai tree. And he climbed the mountain with his little girlfriend to save the bonsai. That goes all back to Tamu. Those little rock, beautiful gardens you can get, at, you know, at the grocery store. Those is tamers. Listen, if you can't get green beans, you can't get tomatoes, you can't get potatoes, you can't get fruit and vegetables out of your garden, what sense is that garden? The Lord has caused the solemn, fe the solemn feast and the Sabbath to be forgotten in Zion. They don't come back any three times a year anymore. The Sabbaths were violated. That's why God said 70 years. 70 years we'd add up would be how many years they did not do the yearly Sabbath of the seven years. He has despised indignation of his anger, the king and the priest. There's no more king now. And there won't be no king to Jesus Christ. They're gone. Zedekiah was the last one. He has cut off his altar. There had to have been other altars. Why would it be the his? That's the brazen altar. He has abhorred his sanctuary. That's the temple. He has given up into the hand of the enemy, Babylonian, Chaldee, the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord as in the day of the feast. Solemn feast. What's that? Oh, the feast, you're happy, great, and all things. So when the Babylonians entered the holy place, woohoo! All right! Yes! And if they had cameras, they were selfie! <laughs> this place is so holy! Watch me touch the table! I'm still alive. I don't know what their names are. Hey, did you hear about a king? He came in here and he offered incense and leopard. Yeah, I heard about that. His grave's over there. You can go visit. You can pay a Catholic 35 bucks and he'll show you where it is. Oh, but watch, watch me what burn incense. <laughs> hey, look, nothing's happening to me. I'm going to grab, I'll take the incense altar back, back to Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar will award me. <laughs> I'll take the table. 
I got the candlesticks. Oh man, I can't bear I can't carry the brazen altar. What am I gonna do? Break it in pieces. Uzzah touched the ark and he did. Some church I've been in church where you know if you touch your God's gonna send lightning down. The Lord has purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. Read it. We'll read about that, Lord willing, when we get to Nehemiah. He has stretched out a line that's found in Amos, a plummet line. He has with not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Jeremiah, right? It's God. It's God. It's God. It's God. Well, the Chinese made COVID nineteen. Okay, Chinese made COVID COVID nineteen, but God's the one that did it. Therefore he made a rampart and a wall to lament. They language the good. Just sadness. Her gates are sunk to the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. And he knows the bars are the gates. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles that go into Babylon. Captivity. The law is no more. Her prophets often find no vision from the Lord. We don't hear from Je Jeremiah anymore. Now we'll hear from Ezekiel. Jeremiah don't know that. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit on the ground. That's almost as as Daytona Beach if you want to get a bus. If you want a bus in Daytona Beach and 90% of the places you pick up that bus, you're going to sit on the ground if you need to sit because there's no seats. There's no seats in the park. They took them all away because of homeless. I guess Daytona Beach has been destroyed because they're sitting on the ground. And I've seen people sitting on the ground. And keep silent. No one's saying nothing to the city of Daytona. Why don't you have some seats? They have cast up dust upon their heads. And that's a sign of mourning. That's a, that's a sign of defeat. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. Man, you're just really terrible. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. There's the shame. My eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth. This is Jeremiah. This is why they call him the weeping prophet. For the destruction of the daughter of my people. That could be God and Jeremiah. I mean, they are God's peop people, and they're Jeremiah's kindred. Because the children and the sucklings, that's children on the boobs, breasts, swoon in the streets of the city. You know, in the tribulation period, you're going to have a lot more homeless. But God's going to destroy the homes. They're, they say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? That's not wine to get drunk. That's grape juice in the Bible. That's new wine. That's not wine fermented. When Boaz had wine and all that, that was not fermented wine. It's grape juice, fresh. When they sued as the wound in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured out, Onto their mother's bosom. Their soul was poured out. They're crying out to mom with all their living up hungry. And I don't think they're getting much satisfaction from their mother's milk because there can't be that much milk because mom has not been eating and mom has not been taking care of herself. Imagine a mother in the tribulation period when she can't get nothing because she won't receive the mark. Now we're in the tribulation period. They can't look forward to Calvary now. Calvary's already long gone. They're sure not Christians. They would not be in the trouble they are in. You know, there wasn't that many that did right in the Old Testament. What 
thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What came you after their destruction? What shall equal to thee? How about Chernobyl? How about the destruction of the English cities during World War II? How about when we dropped the nuclear bombs on Japan? That hasn't happened yet. O virgin daughter of Zion, for the breach is great. That's a hole. A breach is a hole. A breach in a wall would be they took the bricks and the stones and, and they could go through. It's like the sea. That would be the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, When you see the Bible and they talk about the, the land of it, that's the sea is the Mediterranean Sea. They just didn't want to spell Mediterranean. They probably didn't, like me. I don't know how to spell it. That's an awful big C. You ever look at the pictures of the Mediterranean Sea? That's a big C. That's a big breach. It wasn't just a little tiny hole. They went one by one. As much as God destroyed Jericho for the nation of Israel, and one little portion of that wall, and then you can find pictures, was saved for Rahab. The destruction of Judah was vast, and one little prison was spared for Jeremiah. Remember that. All Jericho, except Rahab and her family, we don't even know how many were with her. We know she had a father and a mother. All Judah was destroyed, Jerusalem, but one little jailhouse. Later on, when you get to the book of Acts, yeah, I don't read the Bible, all the great things that happened in jailhouses. The entire city is sleeping in Jerusalem, and in the jailhouse, Peter gets smacked in the face and he's let out. And all the places of, of the place, Silas and Paul are in a jailhouse singing one night, and there's a great earthquake, and a man gets saved. I was going to say Fox's Book of Mars, but Pilgrim's Progress was written in jail. You right, when Pilgrim's Progress, you read that, and there's a break. I forget how, and he says, and I slept again or something, and I had the vision of my next dream. He was let out of jail, and when you pick up the next part of the story, it's when he was put back in jail. They said his daughter would bring him paper, and she would take his stories and bring it to whoever she needed to. The prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. Remember, remember that? No, oh, there's no peace. God's going to break your yoke, and they're dead. They have not discovered thy iniquity. They would not tell the people they sin. When I'm here at Daytona Beach and I preach it, you'd sin. You're a sinner. The Muslims are sinners. The Catholics are sinners. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And some preacher, uh, you know, preacher, I heard this guy preaching down near the farmer's well, but well, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. And God just loves everybody. And everything's just hungry. Those are the vain preachers. I mean, prophets, preachers. To turn away thy captivity, you know, everything will get good. Nothing bad is going to happen. That's Joel Osteen. But have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. Everybody that listens to Joel Osteen is going to find out one day, he's wrong. If you even can bear listen to that. I couldn't even listen to that guy for five minutes. The hospital would have kicked me out. All that passed by clapped their hands at thee. Remember, watch how, how in church you clap your hands. <laughs> all right, it's the strike. Yeah, all right. Woo. Okay. 
Dagon, you did a great job. Oh, Bell, what a great job, Dagon. Yeah, Allah, yeah, right. Look at Allah, he's got his dumb with the rock. Yay. Be careful. Genesis chapter 12. I will curse them that curse you. I just put on the post today. Donald Trump is saying, oh, you know, you Jews, you should have voted for me for everything. Oh, you better be careful, Donald. You're going to quack up one day. And hiss and wag their head. <laughs> At the door of Jerusalem. Saying, is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty? That's what the Queen of Sheba called it. That woman went to the went to the king's house like, my whoa. Even even the people that, that set your table, man. You imagine how much she was amazed at the choir set by David and set by Solomon and Asaph. The joy of the whole earth. Look what they said about Jerusalem. And that's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew. You are the light of the world, the hill on it. It's not a Christian. You are not perfect in beauty. As a Christian, I am not perfection in beauty. You just ask God, and He will tell you. Number one, that guy is very impatient. And I won't tell you the rest of my sins. I may be a light on a hill, but that light has been covered with tons of dust. The light can't see. Until I confess my sin, and he forgives me my sin, and he takes out that rag and cleans the light bulb. That's why i got to make sure when I go into public ministry and I do something for Jesus, I witness for Jesus, I must confess my sin. I ain't got no light at the show. It's covered by my sin. I mean, you got to rightly divide. The computer just did a flip here. Hold on. Okay. All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. Now let me ask you a question. What's Jesus Christ do with open his mouth with all the enemies of the Jews? Out comes the sword. How did Jesus Christ attack the devil in Matthew chapter 4? He opened his mouth with the scripture. And then the devil came up with open scripture. And Jesus came back with more. And they were having the scripture belt. Read it. And I know ministers, I'm going to get old smutty face. And you don't use no scripture. I know a preacher right now, got my, he, he will attack and he'll, but he has no scripture. What has happened to Judah, I want you to get to, is going to happen to the nations one day. And as the enemies will open their mouth against Judah. Ha ha! Jesus Christ is going to come back. Ha ha! Where did they go? <laughs> You're walking on their ashes. They hiss and gnash their teeth. Well, that's kind of interesting. That gnashing of teeth is what they do in hell. A hiss is a sound of a serpent, and their worm dieth not. Oh, whoa. I don't read the Old Testament. It has no value. That's exactly what Jesus says about hell. Their worm dieth not, and their place of darkness, and they gnash their teeth. So you show thyself a food unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word. Scripture with Scripture. Look where that stands. Who, who are we talking about? The enemies. Thine enemies. Of who? The Jews. What's God say about the enemies of Jews? I'll curse them that curse you. What's the curse? Go to hell. 
You know, no Christian can be cursed. Now, I fear the power of Satan that I believe there are some religions as, as you know, the witch doctors and, and, and voodoo and that. I believe they can do things to you to get the power of Satan. I can't be cursed. We, we have swallowed her up. We have destroyed the Jews. You know how many nations have said that? And yet, you didn't swallow them up. They're in Babylon. You wait till God comes up and swallows you up and has a big burp. Certainly, this is that. This is the day that we look for. This is the enemies of Israel. Israel's been conquered. This is that replacement theology. God's all done with the Jew. That's what the Catholics want. That's what the Jehovah Witnesses want. That's what the morons want. That's what Islam wants. That's what the Middle East wants. That's what Yemen wants. That's what Egypt wants. Get rid of that Israel. And then in the public schools, I've been told by a missionary, that the public schools, you pull the map down of the Middle East, and there's no place called Israel. Lamentations 2.16. All right, then when, when we get to heaven, when we get to New, when we get to Jerusalem, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and He sits on David's throne, and we pull the world map down the Middle East. There's no Yemen, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, America. They're gone. Why I say America? Because in New York, there's a place that's totally against the Jew called the United Nuts. I mean, nation. And America supports them because America can't get out of the United Nations. She settled in the United Nations and she allows them to stay in her country. The Lord has done that which he has devised. He is he's faith, he's fulfilled his word. Oh, there you go. What God says will happen. One of the prophets say, as I say, so will happen. That's what Jeremiah. Jeremiah says everything that God told me to do. You gotta wonder where's Baruch? Where's that where's that where's that eunuch? Is he sitting down with him? Hey Baruch, yeah? Watch this. Everything that God told us, I told you. Here it is. You know, it, it, it's a great thing for the people of Judah that are alive that Judah, uh, that Jeremiah wasn't, I told you so, prophet. Jeremiah walking around, I told you, told you, told you, told you, told you. But do you realize the Babylonian army commander came up to Jeremiah and said, God told you. What God told you, Jeremiah, has happened. I thought that was a kicker. You know, Jeremiah, in his life, questioned his life with God and the words of God. He has thrown down and has not pitied. God showed no mercy and no grace to his people. And there are nuts out there. Well, God, will, everybody will go to heaven. No pity. At the great white throne judgment, if your name is not in that book, as Revelation 20 says, you don't go to heaven. He has caused thy enemy to rejoice over thee. You wait till Israel rejoices over their enemy. And the Christians behind Jesus. He has set up the horn, that's the power of thy adversaries. Thy heart cried unto the Lord. Of all that, if there's anything left to say from the heart, that's Daniel in this prayer. And Daniel, that was the heart. I guarantee there are plenty of people today with COVID 19 and all these storms and all these. I guarantee with their heart, to thank God. And for some of them, God's like, I ain't listening to you. 
There'll be more. You know, these smart aleck, and I don't know, I don't, but all God's got to do is tell Larry, keep going west, boy. I ain't finished with New York. I ain't finished with Washington. I ain't finished with New England. Now, I don't know what God's going to do with, with Larry. But they're saying down there by Mexico, there's this other storm start. And they're saying it's gonna, by next week, it's going to hit Louisiana. You probably know there's people in Louisiana. <laughs> oh, come on. Hey, hey, you want Mary? You want to show your boobies? You want a party? You want beads? I'll give you a party. I'll throw a whole bunch of beads in your face with the wind. I'll rip your clothes off and you'll be naked all. I'll rip everything away from you. You let your Pope take care of you. Because I'll tell you, I'm going to let it go. And there are probably Christians in that mess and all that. The only thing going to ha worse happen to us, family, is we just buckle down and pray to the Lord, and if we die, we'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. The only thing worse could happen to us, men can kill us, men, but he can't take the soul. O wall of the daughter of Judah, Zion, the walls of you read about those in Nehemiah. Let tears run down like river day and night. Do you see that one? How come you don't read your Old Testament? Do you see that in 2021? Do you see that where many of our presidents have been? You're saying, Stalin, what are you talking about? Let tears run down the like a river day and night, the wall. Is there not a wall in Jerusalem today called the Wailing Wall? And even U.S. presidents, including Donald Trump, Reagan, I believe the Bushes, have been to that wall. And when you see pictures of that wall, there's always at least one Jewish person, man or woman, and they're crying at that wall. And that wall is a foundation left over from Rome not Babylon. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eye, hey, there's that expression, the apple of thine eye is Israel. Don't you dare steal that for, oh dear, you're just the apple of my, ah, uh, just replacement theology. You're stealing Israel's. You run that apple of thine eye, that's Israel. Be careful what you say. People quote the Bible, they know even, the, you know, it's so funny. People say, oh, I hate the Bible, and then you quote the Bible. Ooh. Arise, build up, Nehemiah. Cry out in the night, start it through to the walls. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thy heart. And there are four watches. They start six, the end of six. Like water before the face of the Lord. Like thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. There are children there starving. What about the children? Oh, people are starving. So were the people of Judah. You expect God just to take care of you because you're an American? There's God's people. Didn't we just read somewhere God did not pity, verse 17? It's all God's fault. No, it's your sin, it's the iniquity. I don't give money and stuff to, to charitable organizations, stuff like that, because, all right, if they're going to give stuff to this family, they might be a needy family. They might need it. But do they have tobacco? You don't need the tobacco. Do they have alcohol beverages? You don't need the alcohol beverages. I ain't giving you nothing to help your family if you ain't helping your family by getting rid of the crap and sin. 
They got illegal drugs. Why do you expect me to help you out when you got illegal? You're involved in sin. You got sexually transmitted diseases you got from a partner you shouldn't be with? Don't ask me to help you. That's cruel. Repent, get right with the Lord, and maybe he'll have to help. Maybe when, when, when you're struggling to fight your sins and get victory over your sins, all right, I'll come and help you. But I ain't going to hold your hand in your sins. I'm not going to hold your hands when, when your only thing is you got caught, not your godly sorrow. Oh, my children need food. Put the cigarettes away. Yeah, evidently, your children don't mean so much to you if you are fill, you are feeding your filthy habits. Don't give me, oh, I worry about the children. In Judah, there are young children. They faint their starvation. There were children we just read on, the, on their mother's breasts weren't getting nothing. Again, look to the tribulation period. Mom and dad won't receive that mark. And their starvation. And the Antichrist ain't helping them. There's no welfare in the, in the tribulation period unless you've got that mark. No mark. There is no business. You ain't even going to have illegal drugs. I think they're going to make illegal drugs legal. So if you want them, all you got to do is take the mark to get them. Oh, impossible. That's what they said about legalization of marijuana back when I grew up as a kid. And that had been prophesied in the movie, in the television series, uh, uh, Dragnet. They say in Dragnet, well, one day we'll legalize marijuana, we'll legalize all the drugs. Marijuana has been legalized. Next, don't, don't legalize prostitution. Hey, in America today, an unwed woman can get in bed with another man and make a baby without a job. And when she has a baby, they'll give her more welfare and money. Don't tell me. I got a family member who was involved in that. So don't tell me. I know people, the more babies they made, the more money you get, the third and fourth and fifth stimulus check the people are getting is because they have children. You don't have a child, you don't claim it on your taxes, and, and you got Social Security underpaid and all that, you don't get a stimulus check anymore. You want a stimulus check? Go make a baby. And when you can claim that baby on your IRS, then you will get a stimulus check. Oh, I bet you all the people running out there have from the same president says, go ahead, you can murder babies at the We'll, 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 we'll get to that one. We'll get we'll get to it. Ready? Here we go. So there's children starvation. There are babies on women's breasts. They ain't getting fed. Sin. Where Hurricane Ida went, there are people starving. Sin. All have sin and come short of the glory of God. Okay, we keep reading. Behold, O oh Lord. And consider to whom thou hast done this. Jeremiah said, God, you done it. Are you ready? Excuse me. Shall the woman eat their fruit? Oh, apples, tomatoes, strawberries. And a child of a span long. That's a baby. That are, there's mothers. The, the starvation is so bad, and they can't feed their children. Span long would be off the bread. They're hungry. They're eating their own children, and it's found in kings. You know how I know that's going to happen in America? I'm not a prophet. I just believe what sober man sows that he shall also reap. This country, abortion is legalized. You're allowed to kill your baby in the womb. 
you're even allowed to, after you have the baby, at these designated places, you can bring that baby and say, I don't want it no more. Be not deceived, God's not marked. Whatsoever man so is that, each other all three. God's going to have it one day. Okay, fine. You're going to want to save that baby because you're going to want to save that baby for lunch. Children eat for free. And it'll be so bad it won't even make the news. And you read about that in Cain. And it's happened in life. And when I grew up, there was a famous airline crash up, up in some mountain somewhere. And when they finally got to the people, there was a quarter of the people left. And they're like, well, what happened to everybody? Well, we ate them. What would you do that for? That's the only way we survived. And that made all kinds of news. And they made a movie about it when I, and that's about the time when I was a little boy. Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? That's what they did. They walked in that holy place, killed the priest. Now let me ask you a question. And this is all about been the tribulation period too. What do you think the, the Antichrist is going to do when they open up that curtain? Voila, here I am. What do you think the, what do you think he's going to do to the priest that's setting up the, the bread on the table and cutting the wicks on the candlesticks and Offering the insect, incense. He wants Jewish blood. He's going to chop off their heads and eat their bodies. Eat their bodies. Read Revelation chapter 12. There's going to be a lot of bodies being eaten. You know, they have a thing called zombies. I want brains. I want brains. No, the Antichrist is going to say, I want Jewish bodies and Jewish blood. I want Jewish bodies and Jewish blood. It's got to be kosher. Well, look, 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 look at this man we brought. He's not Jewish. I don't want him. He tastes funny. Revelation chapter 12. Read it. He was waiting for that baby to be born right away. He wanted an infant to be eaten. Lamentations chapter 2. When he can't get that baby, he's going after the Jewish people. And he gets the 144,000, most of them, not sure of all of them, and he starts beheading them and starts eating them. He's got to cut off the heads because God put a mark in their heads. Can't make the people like he's eating his own. The young... And the restless, I mean, I mean, the young and the old, lie on the ground in the streets. Again, that's going to be America. Why? Because I met plenty of homeless vets who served in our military, and they have no home. And again, people who never had a job in a day of their life has got housing and got apartments. With cable TV, pets, and cars that they don't go to work. You're going to reap what you sow, America. And the young and the old will lie on the ground in the streets. They're doing that today in L.A. And everybody hates it. There'll be more. I guarantee there are people laying on the streets in Louisiana, in New York, and in New England from Ida. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pitied. And that's, if that's not today, that's not the wrath of God and the judgment upon sin. Thou hast called in the solemn days my terrors round about, so that in the day of the Lord's anger, none escaped or remained. Jeremiah did. Jeremiah is writing this, and he said, no one escaped. Jeremiah, what about you and Baruch? It has been so terrible, he can't even think of himself in Baruch. But Baruch and Jeremiah were held captive by Jehanan. None escaped or remained. Those that I have swaddled and brought up 
has mine enemy consumed. You know there are people, there are my friends, they're, oh. now they're dead and gone. The babies, I bounced on my knees. The children, I gave candy. Even we played baseball, whatever Jewish people do growing up. Jeremiah was a priest. He said, all those memories are gone. All those people are gone. American. 